Let's take on the infamous sport versus street debate real quickly here, and let's cut to the chase. Um, so basically this chart is going to show the differences between self-defense, law enforcement, and mutual combat and mixed martial arts versus the type of training or considerations that have to be taken. Many people say that there's no difference between sport and street, or there is a difference between sport and street, or my system is more street-oriented, etc. So down the left here we have, let me give a brief explanation, physical te techniques. You guys can probably guess what that is. That's punching, kicking, grappling. Weapons, well, knives, clubs, guns, bats, rifles, disparity, um, probably uh, examples of disparity of force. You can have an attacker who's stronger than you, bigger than you. He might carry a weapon or, you know, you might be a bully or you know, an attacker and you might have a knife or a gun or a bat, but your um, victim doesn't. Okay, so there's disparity of force or disparity of force, skill, etc. You might be trained, he may not be. Your attacker might be trained, you may not be. Verbal techniques. Um, these are techniques of verbal jiu-jitsu, de-escalation, psychological manipulation. Uh, these are things that you do to say, hey, I don't want any trouble. Or, hey, do you want, you want my wallet in my pocket? And then you use distracting techniques using verbals to counterattack, to give yourself the edge. Um, another consideration of training is that the bad guy has no code of conduct. So in self-defense, that means uh, you, know, you might have a personal conduct, but he doesn't. And you have to take that into consideration. That means you can't be expecting him to uh, shake your hand or acknowledge uh, anything. He might, he might jump you. He might do a surprise attack. He might sucker punch you. On the law enforcement side, uh, same thing. The law enforcement officer and, and you know, good guys that have caught who want to do the right thing, they're dealing with individuals that, that may not when you're talking about self-defense and law enforcement. In mutual combat, obviously, um, that's not applicable because there's mutual agreement to something. And in mixed martial arts, you don't have, you don't have any of that going on. Um, escaping from the bad guy, for example, is another one. That's okay in self-defense. As long as you are, you are able to go home successfully, yourself, alive, or your loved ones, um, you can, if you can escape them, that's okay. You don't have to win. You don't have to defeat. You don't have to apprehend, as in law enforcement. If you're a good guy, you gotta, you got to apprehend that guy, and you have to know the right techniques. you got to think about liability. Okay, mutual combat, not applicable. Um, you just, and these mutual combat, that's like these, uh, these, um, backyard brawlings, fight clubs that you see. Um, the ones you see on TV, uh, uh, on YouTube usually don't have weapons involved, but go Google, uh, you know, knife fight in the Philippines and you'll see mutual combat going on, um, because they're squaring off. That's how I know there's, if one guy's not running away or one guy's not fleeing, um, and they're squaring off, that's mutual combat, okay, um, and then mixed martial arts, I think it's fairly obvious to see that this isn't a dig because there's all these check marks here and none here, whoa, only one check mark on mixed martial, no, it's not a dig, uh, mixed martial arts is a specialization, it's, it's, it truly is a sport, it has a lot of uh, same characteristics of mutual combat except the weapons, um, except the weapons and no disparity. You know, everybody's tried to, you try to match them up with skills, so you don't have a, a boring fight, you know, unless you're a um, sadist. Um, same skills, same height, weight, etc. So, um, <clears throat> another thing about this, this bad guy has no code of conduct, because they don't have a code of conduct, in some respects, um, the defender, the victim can have a limited code of conduct. He may just want to make sure that he's aware of the laws and can set his scenario up in such a way using verbal techniques, possibly even weapons and physical techniques, such that it gives them the edge so that they can either get away or take the guy out. For example, like a sucker punch is, a, you know, there's videos out there science of the sucker punch but it's a it's a skill or it's a it's a attribute you could train as a self-defense technique um you obviously if you do it right you'll be using some verbal techniques um you know etc and it might even enable you to escape but um you don't do that in uh, mixed martial arts 
or mutual combat. You don't. There's there's a code of conduct, and if you're a cop, you definitely don't sucker punch. Your uh, your, I mean, you might take them by surprise and so grapple them, and, and maybe I guess you could if you're a cop if you felt that that was going to give you an edge to get compliance. You wouldn't probably do a sucker punch and do some type of a strike grapple, um, etc. But if you're the bad guy, yeah, they're going to sucker punch you anytime you you can, and if they have a weapon, they might. Uh, you know, stab you anytime they can, shank you. They're not going to tell you they're going to shank you, and they're not going to get into a fighting stance. That's another thing I can talk about, too. There are no fighting stances in this column here, okay? You have fighting stances possibly here to deter in the law enforcement. You definitely have them here, and you have them here, but there's no fighting stances. So if you're advocating a system that gets into a fighting stance, it's not self-defense. It's more mutual combat. Okay, because in self-defense, picture, you know, uh, there was a recent video put out where it showed um, somebody in Brazil, a woman in Brazil being attacked by a guy with a knife. She didn't get into a fighting stance, guys, all right? And when she escaped, uh, got far enough away from the person, she started running, okay? She didn't get into some, you know, boxing, kickboxing, tie boxing, mixed martial, a martial arts stance, okay? She was trying to get out of Dodge ASAP. So, and even if you were trapped, okay, and I'll go into this more a little bit in another video perhaps, but even if you were trapped and, or you, you sucker, you, you know, you struck out first trying to escape, you don't get into a fighting stance and say, all right, I'm going to take you on because now you evolved into mutual combat. If there's a videotape going on legally, you, you could be liable if you hurt that guy. You need to get into a de-escalation stance, a passive stance, uh, I don't want to fight stance, okay, for number one, for, for this Deception. You want to be able to deceive your attacker and let him, let him, or let him feel comfortable that you're not you're not a threat to him, so that you can possibly escape, or put his guard down, down so that you can strike him first and get out of dodge. So anyway, I'll go into more detail about that maybe in another one, another uh, video. But for now, I just wanted to cut to the chase on this seven-minute video and show you uh, some some ways to have better thoughts about this and then put your training accordingly. Questions, comments, leave, uh, leave at the bottom, like the video, and we'll talk soon.